I'd like you to consider a question. What is the worst weapon in Terraria? Classic answers like the Copper Short Sword or Flare Gun are nowhere near the worst. Trust me, I've beaten the game with both of them. After two months, 216 hours of in-game time, and almost 90 hours spent on the Moon Lord alone, I can safely say there isn't a weapon more deserving of the title than the Lawnmower. This all started when I sent out a poll in my Discord server, voting on one final low damage challenge to do. The Lawnmower won in a landslide, with more than double the votes of paper airplanes. With my fate decided, I made a large world on the Remix Seed, set to Journey difficulty. The Remix Seed disables time limits for all nighttime bosses, and I'll explain why I use Journey mode later. It made the game more difficult, not easier. Bit of an issue, I don't have a lawnmower, nor can I get one until I find the golfer in the underground desert. After making some houses, I depart on a journey upward, with neither a weapon nor any means of evasion. Thankfully, I am quite good at- Finding the underground desert is only step one. I still have to locate the golfer inside of it. And that took way too long. But upon finding him, we can finally get started. And now I can tell you why the lawnmower is so awful. This damage might look good, and sure, if you're on a flat surface with a low defense enemy that gets knocked back at the same speed that you walk at, it's okay. Pre-hard mode slimes are pretty much the only enemies that fit that criteria. It deals 8 classless damage at a rate of 5 times per second in optimal circumstances. That probably sounds pretty high, the wooden hammer only does 2 damage and attacks much slower, and paper airplanes deal 4, hell, the copper short sword hits for 5. But it's not the damage that's the problem, it's dealing it. I said optimal circumstances. Firstly, it does classless damage, like the flare gun. That means that it cannot critically hit, and it cannot have its damage improved in any way. Despite what they say, Avenger emblems, menacing accessories, and wrath potions don't actually increase all damage. They only increase ranged, magic, melee, and summon damage. With a full suite of generic damage boosts, it still only does 8 damage. It also won't be affected by flasks, melee speed boosts, the sharpening station, frost armor, or anything similar. On top of that, the lawnmower requires you to be moving forward in the direction that it's facing. More specifically, it requires you to be holding down the movement key in the direction that it's facing. Whether or not you actually move doesn't matter. If you stand still, or try to go back and forth to run something over, it just won't do anything. On top of that, the lawnmower has no hitbox unless you're standing on the ground. If you are even slightly in the air, it does nothing. You have to be on the ground, on a minecart track, or on a liquid with water walking potions. Actuated blocks don't bypass this requirement either. And guess what? If you're standing on the ground, walking directly towards an enemy with a low damage weapon, you're gonna get knocked back when it hits you. Into the air, which prevents you from dealing damage. On top of all of that, even if you're walking forward, standing on solid ground, the lawnmower's hitbox is minuscule. It's basically just the small spinning blade at the bottom. If the thing you're attacking is even slightly off the ground, like basically any flying enemy, you're not gonna hit it. Sure, the wooden hammer has lower base damage and attacks slower, but it's a functional weapon. You can hit things with it consistently. It can use flasks, frost armor, or the fire gauntlet. It benefits from the sharpening station. Trying to hit something with a lawnmower is a nightmare, and that base damage isn't gonna matter much once you get into hard mode and defense reduces it to one damage regardless. The lawnmower requires a two block gap to attack through, and by using a block swapped platform hoik, I found a way to trap enemies and attack them safely. That's a big part of how I killed enemies throughout the game, trapping them and then attacking them from the other side of a wall. To avoid the knockback issue against the eye, I stayed on a minecart track, since that gives you knockback immunity. It worked, although it was quite slow. I also found out that the Eye of Cthulhu has this weird damage multiplier when it's near death. You can see my lawnmower dealing 15 and 23 damage as it gets closer and closer. Since I was on Don't Dig Up, I could take advantage of the high surface spawn rates to make a lawnmower powered meat grinder, for monster lasagna, souls of night, and a bloody spine. I gradually refined it over time, and used 10x spawn rates a couple times since I was on stream and didn't want to have it take forever. The lawnmower does have piercing within its hitbox, so it's actually not that bad at doing stuff like this. Knockback is, at this point, too big of an issue to ignore. Dealing damage to bosses is extremely annoying, so I desperately want knockback immunity. Minecart tracks are too clunky, and gladiator armor is a colossal pain to foam. So I came up with something new. By spawning a bunch of enemies, in this case Servants of Cthulhu, you can prevent Dungeon Guardians from spawning entirely. For more details, go watch this video, but that let me get a Cobalt Shield pre-Skeletron. Challenges like this lead to a lot of situations like that, where I'm faced with a unique challenge and have to find a way to overcome it. The lawnmower is almost unusable without knockback immunity, and I hate farming gladiator armor. I needed to find a way into the dungeon. So I did. Now that I have knockback immunity, I can actually fight things. I do goblins next, and they certainly weren't easy given that this is still on master mode, but a basic trap let me kill them relatively safely. Molten armor would be a fantastic upgrade, so the brain is up next. 
Unfortunately, broken armor shreds through tank builds, and the brain's phase 2 is very difficult with the lawnmower. The lawnmower is completely incapable of attacking upwards, nor is it really able to keep the brain stunlocked since you have to walk towards it to deal damage. And once the brain gets three fully opaque clones, it gets rough. Not only did I run out of potions, I also had to deal with broken armor, confusion, and cursed, which was just too much for me to handle at first. The attempt was only an hour long, so I didn't lose too much time. I did get enough tissue samples for a Deathbringer pickaxe, which means I get to bust out my secret weapon against the Brain of Cthulhu, the Imp Staff, but not for the reason you might be thinking. I didn't actually summon any imps, it was just the easiest summoning weapon for me to obtain. I used the right click to target the brain to allow me to see which is the real one during the clone phase. Combined with some extra speed from a Magiluminescence, that let me scrape by, although it was a bit too close for comfort. King Slime was just a slow fight of running into him, taking and dealing damage, and then running off to heal. There was not much of interest there. Queen Bee, on the other hand, was immensely difficult. Not only does she spend most of her time above you, she gets increased defense over the course of the fight. I started fighting her in the hive, but then decided it'd be faster just to enrage her and do it at home, since she dashes more frequently. It took around three hours, so I just found a setup to do it AFK, and read some stories out of an anthology of HP Lovecraft's works that I have. This right here is pretty much peak lawnmower performance. It doesn't get better than this. Deerclops has low defense, doesn't move, is easily tanked, and only took about 15 minutes, a blink of an eye compared to some bosses. But in keeping with tradition, we go from an easy boss to an absolute jackass. Skeletron was one of the worst fights in the game. It's got nothing to do with damage, or difficulty hitting him, or even difficulty staying alive. No, 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 this motherfucker divides by zero and just blinks out of existence. You know, maybe it was some fluke, maybe it was a weird glitch that happens one in a million times. I kill the hands with the lawnmower again, and it takes about an hour, and no, no, I did it again. After a lot of testing, people looking into the code, and looking at bug reports on the forums, I figured out what causes it. Skeletron's speed is calculated based on his distance from you. If the game calculates that distance as zero, he just disappears. Normally, you don't have knockback immunity before Skeletron, and you don't intentionally put yourself inside of his skull repeatedly, so it would be super unlikely for this to ever happen. Terraria being a glitchy mess is nothing new though, and it certainly isn't going to stop me. I found that standing still up against a block seems to let me attack him without him despawning. I used Lucy to kill his hands this time, because I wasn't spending another hour on that, then got into the honey. I took huge amounts of damage, but it was sustainable. It was working. It was- What the fuck? Why? Why, Skeletron? I'm done. I'm just gonna use Lucy to get him back to 4,146 HP. I don't care. If you don't like it, go do it yourself. I'm just- WHAT THE FUCK?! <laughs> I got him back with the axe, hit him a bit with the lawnmower, whatever, it's dead now. That leaves only a single pre hard mode boss left, and this is why we're on journey mode. Up until this point, I killed all of these bosses on master mode, but it is completely impossible to kill the wall of flesh with a lawnmower on master mode, or even expert mode for that matter. Journey mode lets me play on a difficulty higher than classic for everything except the wall of flesh. It was the only boss that I had to fight on classic. If I wasn't on journey, I would have to do everything else on classic difficulty, and that's just boring. I had to landscape the entire underworld into a perfect arena, play very well, and that still wasn't enough. The wall dealt too much damage. I needed to find a way to recover HP faster than the game normally permits. So I did. Hard statues have a cooldown of 10 seconds between uses, but that cooldown is tied to the block that it's placed on. If you destroy the hard statue and then put it back down in a different spot, it resets the cooldown. This is the only time-limited fight, and I barely got by. About 80% of the world was used. Unfortunately, since the rest of the game is going to be on expert mode and we killed the Wall of Flesh on classic, that means I am permanently down an accessory slot because I never got a demon heart. I went ahead and fished up hard mode ores to avoid letting pirates spawn. I tried doing crimson fishing to get souls of night from the crates, but the rate of getting souls is absolutely awful. So, I upgraded my meat grinder for hard mode, making a pit to trap rates and floaty gross. And for the sake of time, I went ahead and bumped up some spawn rates after a while on stream. These souls of night are extremely important, because they are necessary to get flesh knuckles. This is the part where the don't dig up seed really sucks, because I can't just drop the mimics in lava to kill them, I had to find a different way of killing them. So I did. I used the dryad, because her damage over time debuff does not activate mimics. Took a bit of time, but I eventually got three knuckles. Despite the massive HP pool, the destroyer is the easiest of the mech bosses to kill with the lawnmower. It's consistently damageable and quite tankable. Between the Titania Mask, Frost Armor, Flesh Knuckles, a Berserker Glove, a Bass Statue, and all of my accessories reforged to warding, I had 110 defense, and 110 defense goes a very long way, but who needs defense? If you and your opponent aren't both at 1 HP, did you really kill him? A 6 hour long boss fight might seem like a lot, but it's gonna get a lot worse than that. 
Skeletron Prime was the first boss fight that took multiple days. His AI operates on the same calculation as normal Skeletron, so if his skull is on top of me, the same despawning glitch could happen. But I learned from Skeletron. I'm not going to move at all, and I'm going to avoid letting his skull spin on top of me. I can use teleporters to place me on his skull when he isn't spinning, and I can use the teleporters to dodge when he is. I have a multi-tiered teleporter setup. When he isn't spinning, I can teleport up and then keep going up with the other teleporters to chase him. When he is spinning, I can teleport between the top and bottom teleporters and keep him locked in the middle. It's not perfect, but it avoids the despawning, which is the most important part. Okay, well that wasn't entirely true, I got impatient after a while because the damage really sucked, and I can tank his spinning skull for a lot of extra damage, and it seems like as long as I'm not moving, he won't despawn. I don't deal any damage to the hands, but that's fine, I can just whittle down the- Wow, would you look at that, Skeletron's at uh, 21,879 HP, he's really not that difficult to survive, and I can easily- FIX YOUR GAME, RELOGIC, PLEASE! I can't, I can't do this shit. <laughs> This is why I used Lucy to get Skeletron Prime back to the health he was at each time he despawned. Even if I did it with the lawnmower, he would have just despawned before I got back there. It doesn't even feel satisfying to kill him at this point, but at least I will never have to deal with another Skeletron over the course of this challenge. The twins might be a huge pain to hit with the lawnmower, but at least they actually stick around for the whole fight. I have to use teleporters again to hit them, and I do actually deal more than one damage a hit against their first phase due to them having low defense. I just AFK'd the first phase and read more Lovecraft. I have a staggered teleporter setup that lets me keep pace with Spasmatism as he moves in phase 2, since he stays horizontal to me. That won't work for Retinazer though. Retinazer stays above you and never dashes at you in phase 2. He's a lot more like Skeletron in that sense. In fact, the same setup works for Retinazer. I teleport up on top of him and then back, except there's no risk of dying since Retinazer can't shoot me and doesn't do very much contact damage. It's uneventful, but that's what reading Lovecraft is for. It only took 12 hours. There really isn't that much upgrading to do before Plantera. I got life fruit in a hollowed mask a while ago, and I used fin wings as my wings throughout the entire game. Farming tortoises was slow, but not too difficult because they can be easily trapped. I did have to build an arena though, and I flooded the floor with honey because honey disables enemy spawns if it's sufficiently deep. I could fight phase 1 completely AFK, and naturally read more Lovecraft while doing that. Not her second phase though. Plantera has low defense, so I do do more than one damage, but she makes up for that with some serious offensive capabilities. I have to alternate dodging and sitting still tanking her, and as she speeds up near death, it gets a bit dicey. Her low HP and low defense means she doesn't take too long to kill though, clocking in at only about three and a half hours. Plantera opened up the hard mode dungeon, and with it, the paladin shield. And I want two of them. I made an artificial dungeon at spawn in a small area to trap paladins, but dark casters were making it a lot more annoying than it needed to be. I used the lifeform analyzer to detect when paladins arrived, and then, slowly but surely, grinded their face into the spinning blade of the mower. I also made a pixie trap to get greater healing potions. I put Plantero's arena right below the temple so I could just drop golem into it, and using a minecart track I could position myself on his head and deal pretty good damage, all things considered. Good enough that I decided I could just AFK the fight, and that was a mistake. I'm not entirely sure how, but a tortoise got in and killed me and I had to restart the fight. Unlike when the game bugged out and despawned Skeletron, this was entirely my fault. I'm not going to use another weapon to get the boss back to the same HP if I just made a mistake. So it was back to lawn mowing for hours, and with no more interruptions, Golem died unceremoniously. He's a very tankable boss. I anticipated the Moon Lord taking an extremely long time, so I decided not to do Duke Fishron or the Empress. Neither one is particularly interesting, it would just be sitting mostly still and tanking them for a long period of time, nor do I need any loot from them. That means just the robed boy between me and the pillars. On the bright side, he doesn't do too much damage or have that much HP. On the not so bright side, his clone attack is extremely difficult to deal with with the lawnmower. Remember, I cannot attack anywhere except directly horizontal to me, and the cultist hovers above me by default. I built a simple device to teleport me next to the cultist and then manually went out to attack the clones whenever they appeared. This might not seem too bad, but remember, if I make a single mistake during the clone phase, I am dead. I cannot deal with a phantasmal dragon. If I linger too long on the top teleporter or position myself even a block out of place, I lose. That makes this a very high stakes fight, and I did fail a few times, but in the end, my patience proved victorious. The true test of patience and perseverance comes after the cultist though. I need to kill all four pillars with 100 enemies each and a 20,000 HP pillar floating in midair, and then do the Moon Lord on top of that. All of this is on Expert, remember, and since this is on Don't Dig Up, I can't use Lava like I did for the Flare Gun and Copper Short Sword. The Vortex and Stardust pillars can be farmed by taking a single Queen or Stardust cell and making an area to farm the additional enemies they spawn. Those two aren't too bad, and by putting a one block hole above you, you can protect yourself from the laser beam portals in the Vortex Pillar. The Stardust Pillar isn't quite as easy, and I had to set my spawn and repeatedly die to kill it. They still took hours, easy is a relative term. 
For the solar pillar, I made a pit in the ground and kept teleporting away until there were no Corvites spawned in, and then I trapped and killed the enemies since they can't attack through walls. The nebula pillar, though, the nebula pillar was hell. I made a trap to kill predictors because pretty much every other nebula enemy was impossible to kill. I would respawn, walk to the right, hit the predictors a few times, and then die and respawn. Gradually, they would die, and I lowered the nebula pillar shields and killed it like the other ones. There are some people who believe the Moon Lord is impossible to kill with low damage weapons, that the Moon Lord's self-healing mechanic is unavoidable, and therefore it simply isn't possible. Those people are wrong. I don't know where this belief originated, but it is simply not correct, and reflects a surface level understanding of the Moon Lord's AI. The Moon Lord's healing is tied to the Moonbite debuff, which he inflicts with his tongue mouth thing. If the tongue hits you, it inflicts the debuff for 15 seconds. If you have the debuff, and you're near his tongue, while it's out, the tongue will spawn leeches that fly back to him and heal him for 1000 HP if they make it alive. That mechanic has a lot of points of failure. If you avoid the tongue hitting you, you never get the debuff. That's what I did during Kapo Short Sword and Flare Gun only. If the tongue does hit you, you can cure the debuff with a nurse. This was a popular strategy in 1.3, but it isn't really feasible anymore due to her having increased prices. You can also just kill the leeches. That's what you do when you're playing normally. They only have 400 HP. Projectile and NPC limit exploits also let you avoid it. I didn't do any of those things here. Like I said, the leeches only spawn if you are near the tongue. The tongue is separate from the Moon Lord. Unlike the True Eyes, it does not teleport with him. By setting up two teleporters a long distance apart, I can teleport away when the tongue spawns and then teleport back. The leeches also despawn when you get far enough away. Even if one were to spawn, I just have to teleport away before it reaches him. Preventing his healing is not a strategy for killing him though, it is the bare minimum requirement for it to be theoretically possible. I took some measurements of where the Moon Lord's hitboxes are and then got to work setting up teleporters. Through these teleporters I can reach his eyes and kill him painfully slowly. His hands are very annoying to try to hit consistently, they move all over the place, close periodically, and have 37,000 hit points each. I wasn't measuring damage per second or even per minute, I was measuring damage per hour. At first it was around 1000, and then by learning how to manipulate his AI, I increased that to around 1700 an hour. Keep in mind, he has 75,000 HP on those hands, collectively. While doing that damage, I have to micromanage my position to put his hands in a position I can hit them in while also avoiding his healing and staying alive. His death rate damage is still quite considerable, even with an optimized tank setup. I did not kill the hands, I put them at a low HP and then went to work on the top eye before finishing them off. Thankfully, the top eye remains in a consistent location, making my damage against it much better than the hands. My damage was, quite frankly, incredible, over 3000 an hour. Once it was near death though, the highest stakes challenge of all had come. True Eyes of Cthulhu have serious damage potential. I doubted my ability to survive all three of them if they were released normally, even with the blocks blocking the death rays. If I synchronized their attack cycles though, it would be like only a single True Eye was released because they would all attack me at the same time and only one would deal damage to me. Three eyes, 80 frames of wiggle room, and one shot. 70 hours into the fight and the most difficult challenge of all still had not come to pass. If I mess up, I can do nothing to fix it. If I can't survive them, I would have to restart. I didn't do any testing, nor had I ever even tried to synchronize their attack cycles before in any run. I don't know the timing, and the windows of time in which I can deal damage are far from generous. The cycle starts just after the sphere attack that follows the death ray. I start with the right hand, the left follows, and I line up their timings well. The first eye will hit me, and the second will hit during the iframes from the first. I wait for the timings to line up, looking for the death ray and ensuing attack. Death ray. Spheres. I go in for the kill, but this eye cycle is delayed, late, it isn't in sync with the others, but I just barely manage to fit it within the timing window. If I sit still with the cross necklace, only a single one of the attacks will hit me. The final stretch. 75,000 HP to be dealt, with the tongue being sent out twice as often, and the true eyes of Cthulhu that are considerably more dangerous than its first phase. I set up the teleporter to reach his core and put a second teleporter with the one far away. I stay at each teleporter for about 10 seconds, then swap to the other one once the tongue comes out. I can't actually see the tongue, so I use the time remaining on the debuff to let me know when it's been released. I'm using smart cursor with switches. The left switch takes me up and down between teleporters, while the right switch takes me to the distant teleporter. I move my mouse between the left and right side of the screen and manually click for every teleport. None of this fight was done with a macro. I pressed every single button. And every single button brought me closer and closer, inch by inch, mile by mile, 89 hours. That is how long I spent fighting the Moon Lord. For three weeks straight, I did nothing but stream fighting the Moon Lord. In time, the gods came to fall. In their place stood the reviled and despised, the hopelessly incompetent, belittled since its inception. In time, the lawnmower alone stood triumphant, where none dared to follow it.
Also, I finally made a Patreon, link down in the description. As of right now, it has the NSFW Games video on it, since that got taken down from YouTube, and when I make audiobooks for some of Lovecraft's stories, they'll be out there much earlier than they're on YouTube. But, for now, I am dead inside.